Welcome to the Dark Ozarks. We are discussing the Tridster. Whether you know him as Loki, Coyote, or even Jesse James, the Tridster has had an impact on the lore of the Ozarks. We will get back to that in a minute, but first we want to remind you that the Dark Ozarks podcast is now available on Branson Podcast Network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, or about any other podcast platform. So how did the Tridster affect the legends of the Ozarks? From the infamous folk hero outlaws to cryptid tales, coyote, or even the Lavner, the Trickster has been at home in the Ozarks for hundreds of years. You have to look at the tall tales, the Native American lore, as well as the myths that were brought with European settlers. We will return to the question of how the Tridster is hiding in plain sight in the Ozarks. But first, we want to invite you to like, follow, and subscribe to Dark Ozarks on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as your favorite podcast platform. We also invite you to become a Dark Ozarks subscriber on Facebook. On the Dark Ozarks Facebook page, click subscribe. Have your login information ready and join Dark Ozarks behind the scenes for only $4.99 per month. Your $4.99 per month subscription allows you to come with us on paranormal investigations, deep dive research, and topics too controversial for public view. The next 100 subscribers will be entered in the drawing for a free Dark Ozarks t-shirt and an exclusive signed first run copy of the book Dark Ozarks The Spook Light. Subscribe today to be entered in the drawing. And now you can get Dark Ozarks t-shirts for sale at darkozarts.com and paranormalsciencelab.com. We encourage you to check out Always Buying Books in Joplin, Missouri, in person and online on Facebook and at the website alwaysbuyingbooks.com for all of your reading needs, including a large section on the paranormal, history, and more. Not to mention, the building is haunted. Tell Bob and Elise that we sent you. We also want to thank Beard Engine Brewing Company in Alba, Missouri. Beard Engine Brewing is the only English-style brewery in Missouri and has been twice named Missouri's Best Brewery by the Missouri Brewers Association. Great beer and great food in a historical building with a noir past. And yes, their building is also haunted. Tell Nate and Tip that we sent you. Absolutely. And uh, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm about due for some English ale. Me too. It's been a while <laughs> since we've gotten over there. It has. And I did not get to get their grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And <laughs> I want one to go along with my uh, uh, traditional English ale. It's a neat place. And <clears throat> one of the fastest responses that we ever got in during an investigation very true very true and more to come there yeah so tricksters uh for tonight we have uh on the long format which will be up soon we have a lot to cover yeah but since in the research for uh, tonight's episode we came across some very Mm, surprising bits of information that are associated with Native American lore and <clears throat> also some, some crossover points with the Ozarks. Yes. Um, but um, I think why don't we jump over and talk we're actually going to go to the East Coast for a minute but it kind That's of illustrates some of the things that come up in the Ozarks, um, and that's the Dover Demon. The Dover Demon, uh, <clears throat> I was unaware of this. It actually is pretty well known, mm -hmm. and um, it's gone, in fact. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, what I like about it is that, on one hand, it's a rather long-standing group of myths um but the cryptid or the monster involved um as it's currently known is fairly recent and the witnesses are still living 
and can give accounts, which is which is neat. You don't always get that. And the 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 primary witness is as well as some others appear to be extremely credible. Yes. And not necessarily thrilled with the notoriety around it, but <laughs> but not disavowing it either. And I guess in particular, um, this uh, the, the main account was from 1977 uh, from Bill Bartlett, who was 17 at the time. And he describes a creature with large red eyes with tendril-like fingers and um, that he was on top of a broken stone wall on Farm uh, Street in Dover, Massachusetts. Um, another young man, John Batster, saw a similar creature on Miller Hill Road the same evening. And another young woman, uh, Abby Brabham, claimed to have seen the creature the following night on a third street. So um, they all gave independent stories and sketches that matched up. But what I find really interesting is this is just sort of the modern iteration of apparently what's been going on in this area. It does seem like a really interesting area to say the least. And that tying back to the Ozarks for a moment, just in terms of some of our research and investigations, there will be locations where a lot of odd phenomena occurs. The phenomena itself uh, does not necessarily appear to be related to each other, mm -hmm. but the location seems to be a center of oddness. Yeah. And Dover seems to, to be one of those, particularly Farm Road. Um, going back to even 1914, um, Dover Farms, a uh, book by Frank Smith, he describes that in early times, that road um, around what they call picturesque Polka Rock um, had superstitions of a, a devil on horseback. And I, I, uh, I did appreciate the, the quote in that in that particular book referring to uh, the uh, the phenomena as, quote, his satanic majesty. Yes. <laughs> yes. As if, uh, let's let's not invoke his name directly. Um, but uh, also that around this rock are are legends of treasures being uh buried almost like pirate treasures um which no one really is sure where that came from um but i do i did find it interesting that it has been theorized that the outcropping that's known as polka rock may have originally been called the puka stone after the fey in celtic yeah. folklore <laughs> And as a, as a note on that, I think it is, it is also tying in, uh, the, there's two ties that we're looking at in terms of tricksters. And mm -hmm. both of these ties also have references to the Ozarks and mm -hmm. to cultures associated with the Ozarks. Uh, the Puka is a trickster uh, yes. itself. And <clears throat> it is... Uh, marginally less terrifying it is of particularly of irish mm -hmm. uh, origin it is mildly less terrifying than the, its scottish counterparts no big yeah. surprise there but it is still deeply mischievous and it can appear it is a shapeshifter mm -hmm. uh, it could be theorized that nobody actually knows what a puka actually looks like that's true because you never know if it's in disguise. <laughs> uh, and it and it can appear in a, in a variety of forms. The uh, the the typical manifestation is of a rabbit, 
uh, a horse or a dog and that it's mm, sometimes as a person uh, it mm-hmm. is recognized as the fae um, as, a, as a member of the of of the courts um, probably of the seated courts if you want to go with wb yates and it's it's approximate counterpart could be considered the kelpie um, in the sense of it is a, a shape-shifting horse uh, or person. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, the Kelpie of Scottish lore does tend to be bloodthirsty and doesn't <laughs> like people much at all. Well, it likes people a lot, apparently, but only to feed on them. The Puka typically plays tricks. Yes, and and, and these are some of the hallmarks of the trickster, a shape-shifting or using non-supernatural disguises um and um being a bit base but yet very clever to win the day but often with help from others um and um the dover demon story is a, a pretty good illustration that all of these iterations may be related to the puka or just trickster myth generally, um, and it's continuing to evolve. It, it is continuing, and it's, <clears throat> of course, on a, on a pop culture standpoint, the Dover Demon, quote unquote, has appeared in a number of forms in, mm-hmm. in print and media, uh, internationally even. Kind of a, a bit like the Ozark Haller's um, infamy right now uh agreed agreed and the and the howler will make an appearance in tonight's episode series also <laughs> yes <laughs> because of course it will and the the other interesting tie-in and this is is actually uh from uh, uh one of the youtube channels that that was part of our research but was a reference to the manigishi and yep. the 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 manigishi is is a cree um cryptid Mm -hmm. that interestingly enough uh not sure how many people have tied this together uh william defalco's youtube channel was one that did tie this together that the descriptions of one of two forms of the manigishi very closely relate to the reports the 1970s reports of the dover demon and this is a an entity out of cree folklore associated with water Right. And um, so it, it may be a little broader phenomena than than Dover, Massachusetts. It it might be. It's interesting to me because there are similar conceptual counterparts in essentially the, the idea of the water nymph, the water sprite, um, but also aspects of little people legends yeah in um are are particularly cherokee but a a number of the legends surrounding here in the hills the manigishi although the this this particular cree it's important this is um folklore from the cree not folklore from the creek um creek indians are in the southeastern portion of the united states um <clears throat> native lands uh, for the Cree is uh, in Canada, just across from the Great Lakes, as well as portions of um, Michigan and Wisconsin in terms of ancestral lands. Yes, yes. But, it, it, but the similarity is definitely, um, I think, more than just coincidental. I suspect it is. I also found it particularly fascinating because the the Manigishi is associated with caves and water. Yes. And that comes up quite a bit in those arts. Uh, Just a smidge. Um, (laughs) We do have a lot of caves. We do have a lot of water. Um, We also have a lot of locations that mm, if you're of a mind of mm, sensitivity to such things, mm, thin spaces for the Fae. Yes, yes. So um, 
I, 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 I found that cl the cluster of lore around the Dover demon very interesting. And we're going to be talking about a lot more things on the long version of that will be um, available tomorrow night. So be sure and uh, check it out when it uh, drops. And don't forget to check out upcoming events and merchandise at darkosarts.com and paranormalsciencelab.com. Thank you again to Always Buying Butts and Beard Engine Brewing Company for helping to bring the Dark Ozarts to everyone. On the next episode, we're going to be discussing Celtic lore and the Ozarks. Catch the Dark Ozarks podcast on Branson Podcast Network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, or about any other podcast platform. Thank you, everyone. And remember, there are no easy answers in the dark goes